owns Antarctica? Is there a central government? Is there an Antarctic army and navy? How about an economy, or, or income taxes for that matter? Antarctica's way of doing things is very different from the rest of the world's. There's no central government, Congress, chambers of commerce, or shopping malls. Several countries have made claims on portions of the continent for research bases. In fact, there aren't really any towns, only scientific settlements belonging to the countries that sponsor them. But people are doing business there. Things get bought and sold. Buildings get constructed and demolished. Gas gets pumped and babies are even born. People work there, live there, eat and sleep there, and even have fun there. How does all this happen in such a remote, unforgiving location without a centralized government? Antarctica is governed by the Antarctic Treaty, which went into effect in 1961. This treaty establishes the legal framework for managing Antarctica. At the end of 2001, 45 treaty member nations met in Russia for the 24th Antarctic Treaty Consultative Meeting, where those who have territorial claims discussed issues. One thing that all member nations agree on is that Antarctica is only to be used for peaceful purposes. So, there is no military activity, such as weapons testings, that take place there. Military personnel and equipment may be used for scientific research or other peaceful purposes. This makes Antarctica unique. The history of the official international cooperation on Antarctica goes back to 1948, when the United States proposed that the continent be made an international trust territory. Today, seven different nations have territorial claims to portions of Antarctica. However, the United States and Russia don't recognize territorial claims made by those nations. But both countries reserve the right to make claims. Mostly research teams from the seven nations that have territorial claims inhabit Antarctica. During the summer season, nearly 4,000 scientists and support personnel call Antarctica home. About 125 people are usually at the South Pole. But the continent also has its share of tourists. They arrive during the polar summer, which is our winter, mostly by private ships. In 2000, 2001, more than 12,000 tourists made the trek. Most of these trips lasted approximately two weeks. About the only other economic activity is a limited amount of commercial fishing. At one time, Antarctica had thriving whaling and whale oil operations. But when the whaling trade died, so did most of Antarctica's day-to-day -day commercial activity. For many years, whaling was a virtual free-for-all. From the mid-1860s for a period of about 100 years, the whale populations was nearly depleted. This is one reason for the International Whaling Convention, which established conservation efforts shortly after World War II. Because Antarctica is a remote island continent with no available building materials, everything has to be shipped in for building projects. One of the most common sites you'll see is the simple Quonset hut, made out of corrugated steel and framing. Other buildings are simple structures made out of wood and sheetrock. There is one building material that is available in great quantities, ice. <laughs> yep, one type of structure you'll see in Antarctica is the igloo. All you need to build one is an ice axe and saw. There's also one other type of structure that comes in handy for those making this trek, tents. These lightweight mobile homes are the primary shelter for visitors and researchers who make their way into the interior for the ultimate Antarctic destination, the South Pole. Whether you're staying in one of the permanent facilities or camping on your trek to the South Pole, one piece of gear that you can't do without is rope. You'll need it to hold on to to get from building to building or from tent to tent whenever the stiff Antarctic winds begin to blow. I don't know if MTV is available, but there is one cable TV system operated by the American Forces Antarctic Network at McMurdo. And they offer six channels. Other research stations provide their own television entertainment with VCRs and DVD players. The U.S. also operates two FM radio stations and one shortwave station. 
Telephone service can be used to call only between buildings in a given research compound. And the only way to call home would be with a satellite phone, shortwave, or some other type of radio. Antarctica doesn't have any developed ports or harbors. Most of the coastal stations have offshore anchorages and supplies get to the island by small boats, barges, and helicopters. A couple of the stations have a basic wharf facility such as the one used by the U.S. Coast Guard at McMurdo, but it's limited to government use except by permit. There are 30 airports serving Antarctica, operated by 16 national governments that are party to the Antarctic Treaty. These can handle fixed-wing aircraft or helicopters. Some of the airports can handle standard wheeled landing gear. Others require ski-equipped landing gear. And after flying to Antarctica or arriving by Zodiac boat from a ship anchored off the shore, you'll have several different ways to get around on land. You can get around on foot, with snowshoes or skis, ride in a tracked vehicle, or fly further inland by fixed-wing aircraft or helicopter. However you choose to travel, prepare yourself for a long trip. I mean, Antarctica's huge! Well, the name of this show is, Do I Need My Passport? So you're probably asking yourself, well, do I? Well, there aren't any immigration people to check it when you get there, but since you can't fly to Antarctica directly from the United States, you'll need to pass through a country or countries that do have flights or ships destined for the continent. To pass through Chile, Argentina, Australia, or New Zealand to start your journey to Antarctica, you'll need your passport. Okay, you know how Antarctica was discovered and explored. What animals live and what plants grow there, you know the difference between a tabular berg, ice flow, and an iceberg, and you can recognize a glacier. You know what clothes to pack, food to bring, and what kind of shelter you need. You're all set to make your trek to Antarctica 90 degrees south. Good luck, hey, and try to stay warm.